Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and this time we're going to talk about super or uber cheap clock radios. Now, in this little mini series on my channel, I've done um, very expensive clock radios, very high feature clock radios, and so I just wondered, what could you get for under $10 for a clock radio? And I was really expecting to see something like these really junky clock radios that you see sometimes in um, inexpensive motels. You know, they barely can receive anything. You can't figure out how to use them, and they're just terrible. But I was pleasantly surprised. So I actually went to, um, well, I went to three stores, but I really bought from two because it was a little experiment. And so uh, from Walmart, I got this for under $10. This is the ONN, ON, B1, 4A V201. That's a mouthful clock radio. And from Kmart, and we have no, we don't have Kmarts around me anymore. I had to go to a different town that I was traveling to. Um, this is the GPX, kind of a brand that's been around for a while, uh, more inexpensive stuff. C224B clock radio. And then we're going to have, as a point of reference, we're also going to talk about this one here. Uh, this was a little more expensive. This was about. Um, 15 or 16 dollars but you can get these for around 14 dollars if you go online this is the gpx c353b clock radio again another cheap clock radio and we'll, we'll talk about the pros and cons now the one thing i want to mention is for me to do these reviews on clock radios there's a lot of good radios that are clocks too um, but i really was looking at radios that had both am and fm and he had basic functions like a snooze bar, things that would be important to me. And of course, you'd have to be able to wake up with either radio or buzzer. So those were my basic kind of initial requirements. So when you look at these radios, I want to tell you a little secret, or at least what I think is a secret. These radios look completely different, right? Different brand names. They're the exact same radio. Now, I know you're telling me that's not true. They look completely different. But think about someone in a different suit of clothes, right? You put on a different suit of clothes and look different, but you're the same person on the inside. That's the way it is with these radios. So, so to give you a summary, both of these radios um, will give you, of course, an LED clock. They have battery backups that you can put two triple-A batteries in them for a battery backup. They have basic AM and FM functioning, dual alarms, the things I've talked about like a snooze bar and all that kind of stuff, um, little speakers, and their performance is identical. In other words, their FM performance is identical, their feature set is identical, their sound believe it or not, even though one has two speakers and one has one speaker, is identical. These are the same, probably, circuit boards in these radios, dressed up to the specifications of the uh, end retailer or the end seller the end who said, we want a radio to look like this or this, and they've done it. So there are some um, differences in the dress, if you want to put it that way. And, um, and the most obvious one is uh, the LED display. So this is a 0.6 LED display in the red, which I think tends to be on cheaper radios, but it's fine. This is a 1.6 LED display. So it's, this is gonna be a little bit better if you have poor vision at night. Um, this one here also has, in the back, if I can turn it around, if you can see it, right there it has an AUX in so you could patch in for instance your laptop or your phone um, these are not high fidelity radios by any means but you would get more volume so if you wanted to crank up the volume you're watching a movie on your laptop and you're going what what is that you could plug in one of these and get a little more volume so let's talk about the performance and again we're talking about both of these radios because they're identical really on the inside so so one of the things that I was looking for in a clock radio was decent fringe FM radio performance and the reason I wanted that is because I live about 35 ma miles away from the radio transmitter that I listen to maybe even a little bit further so um, on a scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being the cheapest, junkiest motel clock radio that doesn't work, to 10 being my Boston Acoustic Wave Receptor clock radio, which had the best FM receptor of any clock radio that I've ever used, 
um, which is now dying, unfortunately, because it's 12 years old. I would say that the high-end Tivoli radios were about an 8. Um, the Sangean radios that I tested were around a 7.5 or 7.8, so really good reception. These, surprisingly, were about a 5. Now, 5 would be my minimum cutoff for a fringe radio. And why do I mean a 5? Well, because I had to do a lot of manipulation of the antenna. So if I wanted to listen to one station, I might have to have the antenna like this. If I tune to a different station, I might have to put the antenna up here. Sometimes, one day, even listening to the same station, I'd have to move the antenna around. But once I found the sweet spot, um, then the radio performed okay. I could listen to that FM station pretty much without a lot of noise and that sort of stuff. So I think that's really pretty darn good for a cheap clock radio. These have little speakers, and I would say these were the speakers in these radios was very reminiscent of radios from the 1990s, clock radios. So in the 1990s, clock radios were just commodities, not very exciting, and the sound from them was adequate, but I would say flat. In other words, it didn't have any bottom end, low bass, really didn't have much of a high end, the brilliance was not there, just that center frequency chunk, which was fine for listening to voice and waking up to music and maybe even like listening to a little music softly in the background where, you know, the high and low end wouldn't make quite so much of a difference. But not anything that you would listen to at loud volumes and enjoy listening anything from um, a symphony to rock music. I mean, just, just kind of dull sounding. With that said, these clock radios are perfectly loud enough uh, for most of us, I think. And they also didn't rattle or distort the sound. I didn't really put them up 100%, but at, at normal volumes, they were fine and perfectly adequate, really. I mean, I think if you're looking for cheap, it's, you're not going to be offended by these clock radios. Now, at the same price, you might think that this one, since they're the same clock radios, is the better value. And you may or may not be correct. So this has the bigger numbers, and it also has the, the AUX or the auxiliary input, right? So if you're looking for that, that would be this would be the one for you. And this is the Walmart ONN brand. Um, however, this one has advantages too. Its advantage is, or it advantages, is that it's really small. So if you have a small nightstand or you just want to put this in a little nook someplace, this is going to fit better. And it also has much better ergonomic buttons on the top. So if you're fooling around at night and you're trying to find which button is which and you don't want to press the wrong button, this is the way to go. There's some uh, advanced features too. So I mentioned it has dual alarms, but it also has, these both have gradual wake systems where the sound gradually builds up so it's a little bit less jarring in the morning. And that's nice. And each of them features 10 AM and 10 FM presets. So you can actually set the radio to 10 AM stations or 10 FM sta or both really 10 AM and 10 FM and listen to uh, those choices. Now, I found that to be a little bit of a disadvantage because I only listen to a couple of different stations. And so if you have, it, it, you, you have pressed the same button. So you're, you know, like it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you have a station in one and a station in two, then the other stations are just random, whatever. And so you have to go all the way around again. Now, if you're clever, you could program blocks. So you could have station one and two and then repeat that in three and four and repeat that in four and five and on and on or wait, wait five and six and on and on. And so you could do that if you choose to. Um, but again, it's you might find it an advantage or a disadvantage. Um, so really shockingly good for the price. Um, I think I'm, I was shocked that they were as good as they were, but I mean, nothing to write home about. Construction is cheap. Now, people always ask, why don't I play the radios? Because it doesn't make much sense. It's going to come out of my speaker, go to my microphone, get encoded in the computer, get re-encoded by YouTube. And so you just have to trust me when I tell you what the sound quality is. It's actually probably more accurate to do that than to give you a demo um, because the demos don't really mean anything. Now I said I would also mention this radio here and it's slightly more expensive. Again, the exact same chipset, so the exact same performance, but they made a few design changes here which you may not want. 
Well, one is they went with a green uh, LED display, which is probably a little more expensive, um, which is nice, so that's not a disadvantage. It's not terribly brightly lit. It's probably because the little circuit board can, can't power it enough or something, but it's certainly adequate for most people. Again, radio performance the same, feature set the same, sound quality the same, all these radios sound the same. But this one has little tiny round buttons and tiny print. It was much, much easier for me to hit the wrong button. If you look at the ONN radio, it's kind of the same thing, but the buttons are bigger and a little more spaced out and just easier to find. Again, of course, the other GPX radio he has these really nice ergonomic buttons. The other really big disaster with this radio is that it doesn't have a separate wire for an FM antenna. It uses, I think, the AC adapter cord wire, which is going to be locked onto your wall, and you're just not going to be able to move it around a lot. And so to get these radios to really perform, as I said earlier, I often had to do a lot of manipulation of the antenna. One day, even for the same station, it might be here. The next day, it might be there. Worked okay. You're not going to be able to do that with the, without having that wire antenna. So look carefully for the features that you want on a radio. But the good news is that for even less than $10, you can get a dual alarm, fully functional radio with reasonably good reception. By the way, the AM reception was also adequate. Um, not fantastic, but loud and reasonably clear sound, you know. If you're looking for something cheap, why not go for it? Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. It's a very varied channel that talks about a lot of different things, kind of just whatever interests me at the moment. Um, and also give my podcast a listen, completely different, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, and that's on iTunes and other podcasting sites. And also, as always, have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone.